All right. As the little Zoom voice just told us all, the recording has just began. And tonight we are going to uh, talk about Highlands Ranch, uh, continuing on our planned community series. Uh, this is uh, the Shea Holmes years. Uh, and that's not 1976 to 2021. Technically they cover all those years, but really we're gonna focus on 1997 tonight and on. So where we left off at the end of our last session was 1997. 1997, the Highland Ranch Golf Club had just opened, uh, the Westridge Pool opened, and the Eastridge Rec Center uh, was finally open. We also had in 1997, we reached a population of 46,000. Uh, the Highlands Ranch uh, AMC Theater, which is kind of a cornerstone of Highlands Ranch, had opened. Uh, the fourth C-470 interchange at Lucent, uh, at Highlands Ranch Boulevard, uh, which later became renamed Lucent Boulevard, opened. And the key event that we used to break off the early years and the late years is Shea Holmes uh, had just acquired the Mission Viejo uh, from the mission, the whole of Mission Viejo company, which included the Highlands Ranch for around $400 million. So that's how we kind of broke the first half of the modern Highlands Ranch history from the second half. Now, as we move into the second half of Highlands Ranch history, uh, I know a lot of you might have even been around for some of this or most of this. So I am also looking forward to it. And if there are good highlights or good tidbits that I forgot about, uh, please let me know. Uh, in the comments or in the chat, because I'd love to add those for the future. Okay, so 1999 is when Shea Properties really started to launch into building a business center in Highlands Ranch. It was always in the plans, but it kind of kicked into high gear with the Highlands Ranch Business Park and mostly the construction of the Shea Center. So Shea Homes just taking over, built the Shea Center, which is the building down here in the bottom left. In addition, uh, they were looking for a big anchor to move in. Uh, and Lucent Technologies announced their decision to move the company's headquarters here to Highlands Ranch. And so they built this big three uh, building office park that is right there at the Lucent Air Change. And that is exactly how the Lucent Air Change got its name. They were the main corporate sponsor that came in. And as part of the deal, they got to name the interchange uh, for their corporate, for the building the, into the Highlands Ranch Business District. And so they worked on that. And so this that's how the Lucent Exit and Lucent Boulevard came to be known as Lucent. Uh, since then, it has gone through a few different owners. Uh, when this picture was taken, Avaya had taken over the building, which I believe was an offshoot of Lucent. And then uh, Visa owned it for a while. And last I passed by it, they have some uh, signs up that these are currently for lease and they're looking for a new corporate tenant to be moving into those uh, facilities. I think they said 600,000 square feet are available for lease right there. Then in 2000, uh, one of the other key defining moments of becoming a community occurred is the Highlands Ranch Library moved out of its uh, small facility that was just a storefront and actually got its own business or its own building. So the building down in town center that uh, we know today is there and it is the Douglas County. It is the one part of Douglas County Libraries. It is the Highlands Ranch Library. Uh, there's a picture from the opening dedication of the Highlands Ranch Library. And not only that, but in the year 2000, uh, the Chamber of Commerce for Highlands Ranch was also founded. And now the Chamber of Commerce, uh, they have now actually renamed themselves. They are now the Northwest Douglas County Chamber of Economic Development Corporation. That is quite a mouthful, but if you go out and put in Highlands Ranch Chamber of Commerce, that is where it will take you today is uh, to their website. All right, in 2000, you also had uh, Redstone Park, which is the community's largest park that opened uh, over near Santa Fe. So that park is now available to us. It's a 55 acre park. It includes uh, a lake, uh, baseball fields, soccer fields, uh, Shea Stadium, a playground. So lots of people and lots of kids out there enjoying the day and enjoying a lot of the days under uh, the beautiful Colorado skies there. So if you 
haven't visited the park, it is a nice park to go and visit. It's definitely a big and open park, so very good for sports of all sorts. All right. Then in 2001, the population of Highlands Ranch is now approaching 70,000 people, and Highlands Ranch celebrates its 20th anniversary. And part of celebrating its 20th anniversary is they opened the newest rec center for Highlands Ranch, the one at Westridge. So Westridge has a different design. Uh, we have the antelope out front, as we all heard in the art thing. I had nice video about that in that piece of artwork. Uh, it also has a big workout area. It's uh, one of the ones that has a two-story workout area. I was going to say it was the only one, but I just remembered East Ridges is also kind of two stories where most of the workout area is. So it does give you a little more of an open feel to the workout facility. And it does have kind of an indoor area, which back here I can see that they still really had more of the basketball courts. And now they've really made that more of a uh, turf area that uh, people can go and play in. I think the basketball hoops are still there, but it is uh, definitely a nice turfed area. So if you have not been there, uh, please check that one out. You get the opening of Mountain Vista High School. So right on top of the top of the kind of the back road down on Wildcat, and you'll see Mountain Vista. It's a, a gorgeous school to look at. And it's got a great view out over uh, the mountains behind it. So you can see where they came up with the name for that high school. And they weren't done with high schools at this time. They also turned around and in 2003, just a year later, opened Rock Canyon High School. Now Rock Canyon High School is sitting there on the edge of Highlands Ranch. Uh, but if you actually look at it, the majority of what it serves is it actually serves a lot of people from Castle Pines. So there's not a high school itself up in Castle Pines. So a lot of them either go down into Castle Rock or they come up to, uh, to Rock Canyon High School. So and yet another school in the Highland Ranch area. In addition, uh, as we heard in one of the earlier meetings, the Highlands Ranch Senior Club also opened at this time for members 55 plus. So that event also occurred. In 2004, we started getting the first uh, businesses opening up in the Highlands Ranch Town Center. So this is where you get the clock tower, you get that feel of actually finally building a town center in Highlands Ranch. Uh, as you can see in the photo, this is where the farmer's market has been held uh, for many years since. Uh, it also uh, one, landed one of the big gems of trying to get non-chain businesses into the area is the Tattered Cover was one of the early uh, big stores that was brought in. They had only had another location kind of more in the downtown area and this was kind of their first uh, offshoot out into the suburbs. So a big win there to try to get the tired cover into town center uh, and it stayed there for at least 10 years uh, before moving on and then there was uh, the home depot which also came in that one was a little more controversial there were a lot of people that did not want big box stores moving into highlands ranch uh, but like everything else economics won out and as you no doubt see most of town center is a lot of chains and a lot of box stores but that reflects where people wanted to shop and what people wanted to have in their town center. So the goal of having a town center of unique uh, businesses is still there. And there are some unique businesses still in town center. And hopefully we uh, are patrons of all those. But as a suburban community, we have found that we do love our big box stores also, because you can always go by Home Depot and it's not quiet. <laughs> in 2005, Civic Green Park was at opened in Highlands Ranch. Civic Green Park has served as a uh, gathering place for a lot of the people in Highlands Ranch. And so uh, families and events uh, occur there, or families come there and events occur there on a regular basis. And we just have a few photos here of different events and just the whole setting. It's a nice, relaxed setting. So if you haven't been there, it's well landscaped and it's right in the center of uh, the entire community. Along with that came kind of a new sort of building in Highlands Ranch. There were the occasional apartments or townhomes, but really Highlands Ranch started with the town center uh, brownstones that started to come up then. Is this more high density uh, building uh, really got its start in town center in 2005 at the same time that the park came in. So this is starting to 
bring in housing for the people and knowing that this that uh, Highland Ranch was starting to continue to build itself out. And so they're trying to find ways to be able to bring more people in and people had expressed an, a desire to have a little more dense housing uh, options available also. Then we break, then in 2005, we also get the final rec center that is currently in Highlands Ranch. And this is the rec center at Southridge. So 2005, we opened the rec center at Southridge. It comes along, it brings in uh, the large theater, which is where we hold our, most of our historical society meetings. And hopefully we'll be back there in the not too distant future holding more meetings. Uh, it also brought in uh, some tennis courts. It brought in swimming pools, both indoor and outdoor swimming pools, along with a workout area and a rather large uh, gym with some basketball courts in it. So you got a good mix of uh, different items that were expressed by the community as being desired. And this came more into the southeast corner of Highlands Ranch to uh, serve that group. Then in 2006, we, our population has now grown to about 86,000. We're now at the 25th anniversary of Highlands Ranch. And one of the big events that happened in 2006 is Shea Holmes uh, turned over the backcountry wilderness area to the HRCA. Unlike all the other parks in Highland Ranch that were turned over to Metro Districts, uh, Shea decided that this one would be better managed by the Homeowners Association. So they turned it over to HRCA to uh, manage the backcountry area. And as part of that, HRCA went in and started building out some of the first uh, hiking and biking trails back in backcountry. Also in 2006, you have another uh, more dense housing development that started the Trasana uh, housing development right in the middle of Highlands Ranch also started at that time, uh, building larger, more townhome-like structures. In addition, uh, the next year in 2007, uh, Valor Christian High School, it's a private non-denominational co-educational independent school uh, that serves uh, high schoolers. Uh, that one opened its gates and Valor has gone on to prove itself to be a powerhouse in many high school sports throughout the state. So you hear them all the time when they're uh, competing for state championships or well into the playoffs that you'll hear about Valor's name uh, as one of the big competitors in that. So they've made a name for themselves both in sports and in academics. 2007 also brought Wincrest. Uh, that opened in the northwestern edge of Highlands Ranch. And their motto is add more living to your life. In addition to Windcrest, uh, Shea started off on the last of the housing developments really in uh, Highlands Ranch, the back country. So this is a very prestigious uh, gated community uh, that's down there and their community tagline is wild at heart. And if you go into the back of the back country, you can find some of the largest homes that I've found in Highlands Ranch. There's one home on the back side, which I'm still not fully believing it, but it is uh, listed as 7,516 square feet. But if you look at it from the outside, it looks way larger than that <laughs> as you walk by it, but that's in the very south uh, west corner. Uh, that made me wonder if that was the largest home in Highlands Ranch, uh, but Running around with Zelo, I actually went up and looked in High Winds, and High Winds actually had the winner that I found at 9,831 square feet. So High, so High Winds still has the uh, title as far as I can tell for the largest building, but the one I think that is in the back corner of uh, back country actually looks like it's larger. So I'm wondering if there's an unfinished floor or something still in that one. <laughs> All right. Next up, 2008, uh, V at Highlands Ranch opened. This provided uh, some more luxury senior living as a senior living plan community. And their motto is redefining senior living. All right, now we're gonna head back to the back country. It's 2009, our population is now approaching 90,000 people. And uh, Shea conveys even more of the back country wilderness area over to HRCA. And 
and then in August, HRC opens the Backcountry Highlands Point Trail System. So you can see a segment of that trail system. Uh, it includes you have the Douglas County East West Trail that runs all along this. Then you have this nice area of yellow trails here that is actually restricted to just HRCA members. So just people who live in Highland Ranch are allowed to use the trails in the uh, yellow area, the trail point system. So that was made for the benefit of, our, of the community of Highlands Ranch. In addition, uh, Highlands Ranch is starting to get noticed nationally. Uh, Forbes listed Highlands Ranch among America's top 25 places to move in 2009. We also turned around and we recognized some of our veterans in 2009. The Highlands Ranch Veterans Monument is dedicated with the goal of honoring the service and sacrifice of our nation's veterans. And, and it's got a special location in Highlands Ranch. It is right between the library and Civic Green Park. So if you wanna find it, it is a nice walkway kind of in between the two, but also slightly off to the side. So it does work as a great place if you wanna go and sit and reflect on all the names that are on the pillars uh, throughout the Highlands Ranch Veterans Monument. In 2010, Shea gives money to the mansion property and funds the renovation as well as an endowment to the Highlands Ranch Metro District. Uh, the Metro District begins a $6 million renovation on the mansion. So as you can see from uh, some of the photos, they did a lot of work putting in all the new parking lots uh, that connect from end to end. And then they did put gates on both ends. So it did not become a thoroughfare with people driving through Highlands Ranch, trying to go from side to side via this road. So there, there is gated access on the north end of it. But this did provide uh, better access, better parking to the mansion. And then they also uh, not only refurbish many of the rooms in the mansion, as you can see on the right side, where they're doing a lot of construction throughout the rooms of the mansion, but they also brought it up to all the current standards, uh, put the elevator in uh, that's required, updated the bathrooms, and brought it up to a facility that could be used. Uh, and then down here in the bottom left, you can actually see that they were building the uh, pavilion onto the back of the mansion uh, where they could hold events. So all that work started in 2010. 2011, we are now at the 30th anniversary of Highlands Ranch. The population is officially at 92,600. There are almost 30,000 homes and 3,300 apartment units in Highlands Ranch. In addition, at this point in time, uh, the Douglas County Sheriff uh, realizes that Highlands Ranch is where majority of the county's population is. And so, as a cost savings measures, actually builds the Douglas County Sheriff substation. Uh, we've heard this before that this was not done just because of uh, trying to get favor, of, uh, get gain favor with the voters of Highland Ranch. This was done because it really saved Douglas County Sheriff quite a bit of money. Because before this, they would all have to meet in Castle Rock, and all the people that would take care of Highland Ranch would have to drive up here, and then whenever they got calls and had to go back to the office, would have to go back to Castle Rock. So this allowed them to be able to do all of their work and all their paperwork right here in Highlands Ranch. And it's 35,000 square feet of space, includes some holding cells, evidence storage, and also has fingerprinting along with a community room. All right. 2011 also brings a different sort of uh, building into Highlands Ranch. Uh, the spaces uh, opens up. And spaces continues this higher density, uh, but, in but as a difference in Highlands Ranch is unlike more of the classic, either suburban or really classic, more sort of stone structures that we've seen before, they work on more of a contemporary home feel for Highlands Ranch, kind of really giving a little more variety into the community. And then 2012, so after a couple of years of heavy renovation work. The newly renovated Highland Ranch Mansion opens and Metro District ho hosts the grand opening of the newly renovated mansion, inviting the community to enjoy this treasure. And it is truly a treasure. So I can't emphasize that enough. If you come to Highland Ranch and you want to see the history of Highland Ranch, uh, 
Just make sure you stop by the mansion. And in order to make sure that it stands on its own, is it is supposed to run and operate without continued tax dollars being fed into it, is it needs to make, its, make money on its own. And so that was part of why they built the wonderful event room onto the back of the mansion so that they can hold larger events and they can rent out both the room and the mansion to host events and pay for the maintenance and the upkeep of the mansion. So it's not a burden to the taxpayers of Highlands Ranch now or in the future. In addition, uh, in 2013, you now have uh, the Children's Hospital of Colorado <coughs> South Campus open. It definitely provides convenient emergency medical outpatient care uh, for those in the area. Uh, and I know, and I'm very glad it's here. Uh, my daughter positively had, an, had at least one time when she actually ended up having to go use their services. I think we use their services some other times for other more minor things. And she was very happy. She said it was a positive experience. And it's very nice if your children believe going to the hospital can actually be a positive experience. So you don't want them to be afraid of hospitals because we all of us know that there's a lot that goes on in hospitals that isn't so appealing. Uh, NerdWallet also names Highlands Ranch uh, is, is named by NerdWallet as number two for the best towns in Colorado for young families. So another recognition uh, for Highlands Ranch coming in 2013. And then, the, then the positives start to continue to pile on throughout. So coming up in 2016, uh, Travel and Leisure rank Highlands Ranch number six in its best top 10 places to live in the US. Uh, the area is prized real estate thanks to low crime rate and prime schools. And Money Magazine also ranks Highlands Ranch number six in the best places to live, uh, can, calling it a snug town bursting with jobs. So more claims in 2016, and those continue into 2017. Uh, 2017 uh, first starts off with the 100 acre central park development being announced. Shea Homes is gonna put more than 250 apartments and 200 single family homes into the area, plus a UC Health Extension campus and an assortment of shops, restaurants and, and fitness studios. At the same time, uh, the Denver Channel reports that Highlands Ranch uh, lists the highest average credit score among mid-sized cities in America. So not only is Highlands Ranch a great place to live, but the people who live here are rather, uh, rather conscious of their finances and giving them good credit scores. <laughs> uh, and then Centennial Water also receives a claim, uh, receiving an Environmental Leadership Award from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. So a lot more awards uh, for Highlands Ranch. That leads us into 2018 when Money Magazine came back and Highlands Ranch once again is now ranked number eight in their top 10 places to live in the United States. So just ended multiple years of positive press rolling into Highlands Ranch. And unfortunately we then follow that up with a less than positive national event is in 2019, the STEM school shooting actually gets national attention. It made national headlines on all the news networks. Uh, and one of our uh, community members, Kendrick Castillo was killed uh, while trying to defend fellow students from the two attackers that attacked there. Uh, and eight people were injured and a lot of people lost that sense of uh, security for at least a little bit. I know there was a lot of people who had students at the STEM school. And if you didn't, I know like even my daughter who was at one of the other schools in the area, she knew kids that were at the STEM school because it was a charter school that it pulled from a lot of the elementary schools throughout Highlands Ranch. So almost anyone who went to an elementary school in Highlands Ranch probably knew someone who was at the STEM school at that time. And if they didn't know someone there specifically, uh, it also did force all the schools in Highlands Ranch to go into lockdown. So a more emotional event to all parents that uh, had kids and an actual lockdown event that uh, caused them to uh, be concerned. So uh, just taking a moment to think about all that and that was a more big event and that was one of the more negative events that 
happened that got us some national attention for a non-positive reason. Uh, all right. Then moving forward into 2019, we also did get uh, just down the street from STEM, uh, the opening of the United uh, United Healthcare uh, UC Health uh, HR Highlands Ranch Hospital opens, and it provided 87 acute beds for care and a wide range of healthcare services. Uh, some stats on that is the hospital itself is 340,000 square feet, cost $315 million to build. Uh, provided 500 to 600 construction jobs. Afterward, there are 400 permanent jobs after its completion. It also has 85,000 square feet of medical offices, 75, 73 inpatient beds, a birthing center, 18 intensive care unit beds, a level three, three trauma center and emergency department, including advanced cardi cardiac services and a cancer center. So definitely this brought to Highlands Ranch, our first full-scale hospital to really serve and treat the uh, people of Highlands Ranch. I know before this, you had Littleton Hospital that was just north of here, or you had Sky Ridge that was over in Lone Tree. So we were using our community's hospitals uh, outside of, of course, Children's Hospital that's almost across the street from it. But otherwise, uh, we are going outside of our local community for this. But this now brings a true hospital into our community. And I know even when I've stopped by there a couple of times for different things that uh, they were saying that since 2019, a lot of the emergency services, a lot of the ambulances and stuff are really starting to find this, that at the beginning they were still going to where they always went, but now they're going here and it actually makes the commute shorter, which gets you in front of a doctor sooner, which is a very positive thing for our uh, community. Next, I wanna, show a video that was uh, provided by UC Health uh, right when they opened the hospital, but it actually shows uh, about a minute and a half of them building uh, the hospital. So let's see if this will play properly. Thanks to UC Health for uh, providing us that video. All right, so moving on to 2019, the other big event that happened in 2019, or one of the other events, is Town Center is really starting to open up. So not only did we just see the hospital open, but uh, Central Park opens. And Nancy just had that sculpture in her art in Highlands Ranch recently. But it is art and it's also functional. It does provide uh, police and fire communications with a tower that really helped fill in uh, part of the uh, network so that they had a better uh, solution to the communications in Highlands Ranch. 2019 also uh, brought the Central Park Shopping Center in. Uh, so just an assortment of shops, 
including uh, one of the first Shake Shacks out here. That was it, one of those big chains that was always back east, and you always could hear about it whenever you went back east, but it hadn't made its way out here yet. And so they were able to entice uh, Shake Shack to open up one of its facilities in here, along with many other favorites that we had from our uh, local community and surrounding communities that we're happy to have in Highlands Ranch. In addition, they continued to bring in the continued that higher density housing. So as we can see here, they had a bunch of houses where the houses are very close together, but they do share more of a common green space. And that also that concept of moving the alleyways back behind the homes again, so that you have an open common space on the front of your house and an alley in the back for your uh, cars to go into. And it brought in uh, the, cro the Chroma Apartments also is adding a little more uh, apartment living actually into Highlands Ranch. Twenty twenty, as we all know, and we're coming to the end of, we're still dealing with, is uh, COVID was the big event in twenty twenty. Uh, a lot of the residents definitely remained focused throughout this. Uh, after one year, uh, Douglas County has reported thirty thousand cases of coronavirus in Douglas County, and that led to two hundred sixty four deaths in our county that year. I did not, I wasn't able to find out exactly for Highlands Ranch how many occurred, but there were two hundred sixty four throughout the whole county. Uh, and many of the residents of Highlands Ranch started working from home. And I know quite a few, even as uh, restrictions have gone and the status of the dial has moved all the way back to clear, uh, are continuing to work from home. And I know many employers are still not fully bringing people back. And several employers have literally closed their offices. And I know quite a few that have decided that having everybody work from home is uh, preferable and they are going to plan on doing that for the near future. So there is no plans for quite a few people to actually ever return to offices in the future. So a change of how we live and how we work and more people will probably be not commuting from Highlands Ranch but actually working in Highlands Ranch from their homes. Next in 2020, you have the completion of C-470. For all of us that have been driving this for the last uh, five to 10 years, uh, they finished their major expansion. They added uh, toll lanes. They did two toll lanes uh, westbound from I-25 to University, and then one toll lane all the way over to Kipling. And likewise, from the other side, they start around Kipling. They keep calling it Kipling, but it's actually at the Wadsworth Bridge. And then they continue all the way to I-25 with one express lane heading eastbound. At this point in time, Centennial Water also reports that they are now serving almost 31,000 homes and 7,500 multifamily units and 950 commercial customers. So Centennial Water has uh, really grown and uh, met the challenge of providing water for our growing community throughout all of this. Coming up this year in the near future, another senior uh, living facility will be opening, the Audrey. And this one is gonna be income restricted and try to serve a larger portion of our community that might not be able to afford to live in Highland Ranch overall with uh, the, the constantly increasing housing prices. So they're gonna try to bring more in and uh, keep it at an affordable rate for the people who are gonna try to live there. And then finally, uh, as we're in our 2021, celebrating our 40th year in Highlands Ranch, uh, the South Metro Station number 20 is looking very nice. Uh, I don't know if they've done their official grand opening yet, but I do know I can see fire trucks inside the building on a regular basis. So if they're not officially open, they are pretty darn close to it and it looks like it's ready to go. This one is right across the street from Mountain Vista High School. So this is gonna serve a lot of the Southern part of Highlands Ranch and reduce the response times. And uh, as another side note, this is also one that just a few years ago, this was part of the vote where Highlands Ranch actually moved from the Littleton Fire Protection District over to the South Metro Fire Protection District. And this is one of the items that was actually promised as part of that move was another fire station physically being built to serve Highlands Ranch and reduce our response times. 
in this fire station number 20 is about 8,420 square feet. And the latest in terms of how South Metro is coming forward now to serve our community. And with that, we have cut ourselves up to modern time and just like to remind everyone that with every moment, the present is constantly becoming the, pa the past or becoming our history. So we need to have it, we need to record it. And we're actually done a few minutes faster than I was even anticipating. So with that, we can open it up if there are questions or I know a lot of you have been here in the last 20 years. If there are special historic tidbits that you think that we did not cover that are very important in the last 20 years, uh, please let us know. So feel free to unmute yourself and uh, share any questions or highlights that do you feel like we have missed in the last 20 years. DJ, we have uh, three comments in our chat room. Can you see those and, and perhaps respond to those? Let me go look. Uh, Chat, I'm bringing it down to my other screen right now. How was it decided that the rec centers would be owned by the community association rather than Metro District? Uh, the rec centers were always uh, put together by the community association as those two have different boards governing them. The Metro District is a semi-governmental agency that it, when you go down to Douglas County, they have it on their wall. They are a taxing authority. And so they own the parks, they own they don't technically own the water. They work with uh, Centennial Water, but they work very closely with Centennial Water. Uh, but they are considered more of a governmental agency versus the community association. And the community association, when they came on, decided that for the betterment, and really when you go back to Shea Homes, and it actually started with Mission Viejo before that, was to better sell the homes in the community, having a community association with the pools and the rec centers and all that, uh, would raise the property values and allow them to sell the houses for a higher price, which is why they did it in the first place. And it both raises the price of the houses, plus it builds the sense of community. And coming out of California, that was something that uh, we heard before is they really wanted to get that sense of community. Is Mission Viejo out in California had a swim team and actually their swim team in California actually produced, I think several Olympians, if I remember correctly. And they wanted to have that same sense of community and same sense of people coming together here. And so they, they were on top of really having the uh, rec centers uh, built right away and built early. So when you can see in the original presentation that we did about the early years of Highlands Ranch is those were staked out literally in the first year that said a community cent uh, rec center is coming here and the builder's gonna build that for you. Okay, next, the disadvantage of having the rec centers owned by HRCA is that the facilities are not accessible to non-property owners, such as Highlands Ranch residents of retirement communities. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what that what the restriction is. I'm guessing that is probably a little bit later on. I was gonna say, Nancy, do you know about that? I know a little bit about that because I lived in a community in Highlands Ranch where we also did not have the, um, you know, we didn't, we were not part of HRCA. Uh, and the reason, my understanding on the reason on that is when these communities like um, Windcrest and or um, uh, V or uh, I was in Silver Mesa in Palomino Park, when they were purchased or built, the developers made agreements with the rec centers in terms of how much um, a recreation would be provided within the community. And then also if their people would be part of the rec center or not. And, um, and then what cost that would be to the, to the residents. So you still have, if you're not part of the rec centers, it also means that you're not paying the $150 a month or $150 a quarter, but you have the option to do so if you want to be uh, uh, if you want to have that activity and be a resident or be a, a member of the rec center, you can. You just have to pay it out of your pocket as opposed to having it automatically being required uh, because all of the other all of the other single family homes and um, uh, uh, like condos and all are required to pay it 
but in these certain communities, you have the option. So since in many of these communities, you have a lot of rec recreation anyway, it's like, why would you need double recreation? Why would you need to pay um, to your own community association and then also to the HRCA? So I always thought of it as a, as a positive thing. I didn't have to pay that if I didn't want to. It was my option. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Uh, and then the last one is how many people live here now is I don't believe I've seen the 2020 census number, which would be our last official count. The unofficial count is it is very close to 100,000 people. And some of that really goes to the definition of where Highlands Ranch is, because Highlands Ranch has multiple definitions depending upon where you are. Uh, one of the definitions is right there, uh, the people that are covered by the HRCA, that is one definition. You have a different area that is slightly different that is the people that are covered by Metro District that they do. You also have people that are in the postal code that uh, the post office says is Highlands Ranch. And that's yet a different line. And then you have kind of the geographic or some of the census areas that I think are even a little bit larger. So it really depends upon which one of the boundaries you're looking at, but there are multiple boundaries that kind of define Highlands Ranch. But in general, all of them are very close to 100,000. Some are slightly over. I think some are still slightly under uh, last time we did it, I'm sure, in terms of the census, which is, I believe, the slightly larger area, because I think they include some of the communities that abut right up to Highlands Ranch that aren't what Metro or HRCA believes are in Highlands Ranch, but from the census point of view, they are part of Highlands Ranch. Uh, so I'm sure when that number comes out, it will probably be right at or just over 100,000 is the expectation for what I expect to see when the 2020 census numbers are officially released for the size of Highlands Ranch. All right, any other questions or good history tidbits that uh, are coming up that people wanna talk about that they saw or that they didn't feel like made it into the presentation? are no other comments, then I'd like to thank you all for coming out. I know participation is a little bit lighter uh, tonight, but it is the first day of summer. So I'm guessing a lot of people are out there enjoying <laughs> summer, enjoying their summer vacations. And we look forward to uh, our programs coming up here in the future. And especially as we make it back into the fall and we'll make our way back into the uh, Southridge Rec Center, uh, providing uh, more live entertainment and the opportunity for everyone to get together uh, in, in visit with each other again before and after. Um, DJ, let, let me just comment on that. We For next month, we will still be doing Zoom. We had hoped to be back at the rec center, but it was, believe it or not, it was already taken just like instantly once it opened up. So, uh, so for next month, July, we will still be doing a Zoom. And this is where we're going to be having um, some of the, like uh, hopefully the, um, Laura Thomas, the uh, county commissioner, um, hopefully someone from the school board will we'll be having a representative from uh, actually the HR, the Highlands Ranch Herald, because they're not a, a governmental agency, but they kind of cover all of Highlands Ranch. And uh, hopefully someone from the uh, Chamber of Commerce, only now it's got that long name. So it should be interesting and it should also be a good opportunity to ask questions of some of our government officials and uh, you know, should you have any? And then in August, um, even though we didn't have it on the list, our August program, I think should be really interesting. It's going to be two speakers for August. One of them is going to be the fire department. And then the other one is going to be the sheriff. And I'm told that we will be having Sheriff Spurlock be one of the representatives from the sheriff department. And also then uh, we'll be uh, hearing from South Metro Fire Department. So two of the agencies that really have a, a really big impact in our community will be available. We'll be back at Southridge. Both of them uh, will have a table in the back and uh, hopefully you know, you'll be able to ask informal questions like we always did. So I think it'll just be fun to be back and also some uh, interesting, um, interesting speakers for August. So hopefully you'll all be back next month on Zoom and then uh, come back in, in person starting in August. And also tours. David, this was really well done. 
Very well done, David. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Excellent, David. Excellent. Yep. So I'm going to leave. <laughs> right. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye. See you next Thank month. Thank you. Bye. Bye.